Hello, Acting World and YouTube and all you viewers out there. Thank you again for joining me at Acting with Chad Rook. I'm pretty excited because today I'm going to teach you guys something that I think all actors should technically know how to do, and that is to or is how to edit your headshots. Headshots is obviously so important um, for every actor out there, and it's basically the first thing that casting directors, directors, producers, all that uh, see uh, when you're doing submissions for auditions or even agents when you're submitting uh, to become a client of theirs. So uh, there are a couple different types of headshots that are industry standard, and that's what I'm going to go through right now, and that's the horizontal uh, headshot and the vertical headshot and how to edit those and what you'll need to do that. And then from there, uh, basically, I'll show you what you do uh, with the different styles of headshots uh, for social media, advertising, promotion, all that kind of stuff. So uh, first off, we're going to start off with um, a uh, just a typical vertical headshot. Um, now, for those of you who don't uh, know, headshots... Um, the industry standard size for a headshot is uh, is eight by ten. Okay. Um, now, a lot of times when you uh, do a, a a headshot, it's going to come in a different size. So I'm going to show you how to format it to the particular size. You can't have an eight and a half by eleven or or anything else that uh, you know the photographer uh, whoever did your headshot might send you. Um, you have to make sure that it's industry standard and that when you get it printed. For the hard copy version, it's also the 8x10 um, version. So, you know, 8x10, whether it's vertical or horizontal, I'm going to show you all that. So, I'm going to pull up a headshot here. I'm going to, my buddy uh, Nathan Vitta, who's uh, an amazing actor, I'm going to use his uh, headshot here. Um, now, you guys can see that it is a horizontal shot. Um, it's not, you know, up and down like a lot of the things. So, um, and now these shots are, are really good for. Um, male actors, okay, because it, it, it allows the photo to be more um, zoomed in on the face and not so much paying attention to the body, whereas with female actresses, I recommend that they do a vertical headshot because a lot of casting in that are going to want to see a little bit of their body to just, you know, get an idea of what their frame is like and if it suits and fits the character. So we're going to take my buddy's... Uh, Nathan's headshot here, okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just drag his uh, photo, and I'm, by the way, guys, I'm working on a Mac computer, um, that's kind of an industry standard, I don't recommend PCs ever, but if you have one, it's fine, it works, um, you're going to need uh, Photoshop for this, and that works on both uh, PC or or Mac, um, Mac just makes things easier, guys, so, so I'm going to open this uh, headshot here. So this is my buddy Nathan's, and I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag it right onto the Photoshop icon. Now, this is the new Photoshop. I will put links in the description as to where you guys can get Photoshop, as they do have monthly payment plans right now that allow you to have Photoshop um, and as opposed to paying the full price for the full um, software itself. Uh, but Photoshop is definitely something I recommend all actors get. It is there's certain softwares and certain tools out there that you should invest in your career and purchase, and Photoshop is definitely one of them. Promotion is a big thing, and Photoshop just allows you to be able to have good, high quality photos. And uh, you know, I mean, you are your brand. So if you're posting crappy photos out there, or you know. Um, headshots that aren't edited that aren't you know corrected that you have acne and all that kind of stuff then you know you want to fix that up so this is a headshot of my buddy Nathan dragged into Photoshop it's going to pull it up here okay so now down here okay this is the original layer what I'm going to do is right click on this and duplicate layer okay um you don't need to name it anything it's just it's fine just just keep the 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 standard uh, uh default title and then it's going to create another layer right above this. Okay, so now if I were to shut that off, then it's it's going to show the original layer. And if I turn it back on, then it's going to cover that layer. So you just always want to keep the original so that when you make changes, you can always just click them off and you can actually see what the original was and what the actual um, uh, new version is. So now that I have that here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the image. Okay, and uh, I'm actually going to go File, New. Okay, and here's where I can set my dimensions. Okay, so I'm going to change pixels down to inches because, again, we want the industry standard, which is 8 by 10. Okay, 
And so what I'm going to do is normally I would do, you know, just like that, 8 by 10, okay? But because um, we want it to be really high quality, um, we want to double that, okay? So at least, uh, at least double, if not more. So we're going to go 16 by 20. That way it's a bigger file size, okay? The, the image quality is going to be bigger, but you're still keeping to that 8 by 10 um, size and, and format, okay? Resolution, you can just keep it as 72, that's fine. And just create, okay? So this is the basically industry standard size of what a headshot should be uh, professionally. Now I'm going to go back to this, uh, which is Nathan's uh, headshot here. And uh, just up here in the top left, okay, I'm just going to have the move tool selected, okay? And I'm just going to literally take this and drag it over on top of this uh, file here. Okay, now it's going to be a bigger file because it's obviously high quality. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Command T, okay, and that's going to outline the actual size of this. And just down here, I can actually drag from the corner and I can make this smaller so that it matches up with the format that I have. And you want to just basically just go to the very ends um, like that and then press the move tool again and bam it is set in place okay now this isn't the typical headshot that a lot of people use because a lot of people most uh, a majority I would say use the vertical headshot I like these horizontal headshots because when you're in an audition and you see um, headshot after headshot after headshot after headshot on the tables and everything um, they all just kind of blend in with each other. However, with this format, this allows your headshot to stand out, and I'll show you why. It's it's because it, it does look completely different. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this background layer here, which is the white layer, and then I'm going to click this paintbrush tool, the paint bucket tool, whatever you want to call it. Okay, and then I'm going to select black. Okay, just click on down here on this color, and then you select whatever color you want, purple, whatever. But uh, just in the bottom right corner is going to be black. Click OK. And just down here, just on the thing, I'm going to paint it black. Bam, look, we're already looking good on the headshot. It already almost looks like an industry standard. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the Move tool again. Click on the background layer. I'm going to move this up just a little bit, okay? Because, again, we, we do want Nathan as the main focus, and the eyes tend to automatically go to the upper middle half of photos it's just a i don't know why but when people first see a photo that's where they look so you want the eyes kind of in that general direction or general area then what i'm going to do is i'm going to click on this uh, text and font uh, tool here okay and i'm going to make the lettering white okay so when i have that selected i'm going to again select white okay Click the two, and then just down here is where I'm going to put the name, okay? Nathan Vitza, okay? And then what I'm going to do is click the Move tool once I'm done typing it, and I'm going to drag it over to about here. Now, you can use basically any font that you want. You just want to try to avoid things that are crazy. You want to make it easy um, to read for the casting directors, producers, anything like that. You just want them to be able to see the name clearly uh, without crazy hoopla type font okay you don't want little jagged edges you don't want it to look, oh that looks cool and badass you know i want this font just just make it a normal uh, you know uh, standard uh, font uh, if you highlight this if you click the t uh, text font okay and you just double click this it's going to highlight this and then up here is where you can choose the different fonts now a font that i like to use for headshots okay is called trajan pro Okay, and it's uh, and you can bold it or italicize it or anything like that. But uh, basically, you're going to come down here to Trajan Pro. Okay, and if you don't have it downloaded, I'll put a link in the description. It's called uh, there's a website called Defont.com, and that will allow you to download various fonts. If you can't find one, just Google Trajan Pro font, and there's going to be tons of sites where you can download them. And once you download them and apply them to your uh, Mac computer or any computer. Uh, Photoshop automatically implements it for you. So anytime you download a font and you install it, it'll automatically be in that list. Okay, and then uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, it's changed it to um, Trajan Pro. Okay, now that's a little bit big, so we're going to double-click it. Okay, and we're going to just change the size. So we're just going to go down to, say, 48. Um, let's see what 60. 60 looks okay. Okay, that's even even though that's still a little bit big. So let's just double click that. Let's just go to say we'll go 52. Bam. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
make this a bold okay so just here where it says regular you can click on bold so that the font stands out a little bit more now if i press the movement tool again bam that is the font we want now if you want this to make it look really good um, we're just going to just alter the font just a little bit. It's not just, you know, cut and paste, all simple things. If you want things to look good, you got to take a little bit extra time. And that's what's going to make your headshot and any work you really do out there uh, stand out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the font. It's done now. It's in the font that I want. It's the size I want. And I'm going to uh, click the text font tool again here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select everything except for the first letter of his name, okay, uh, Nathan. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make that a little bit smaller. So let's go 48 with that. So, okay, and then I'm going to do the same thing with his last name. So I'm just going to leave the first letter, highlight the last letters of it, and turn that to 48. Now, if I click on the movement tool, you see what I mean? It capitalizes the first letters of the names, and it just makes it look a lot better. Unfortunately, this font only does capital letters so if you were to collect you know just type in with a capital n and then small athn they're all going to show up the same size so unfortunately this is the the option in order to correct that so guess what we're done this is the headshot for a horizontal um type uh format of photo so again this is what a horizontal headshot would look like this stands out because you have these big huge bold uh, black uh, borders along the photo. Trust me, this stands out a lot on a table. Um, it's a bright photo. And again, guys, when you get headshots, okay, make sure they're professional headshots, okay? That your eyes are clear, okay? That they're in focus, that um, there's contrast between you and the background, um, that, you know, there's nothing crazy going on. You don't have big logos on your, on your clothes. You want your face to be the main focus. Okay. So when you wear neutral colors, like Nathan did here, like, the, you know, a green or anything like that, it doesn't take away from his face as opposed to if he was wearing a bright red shirt or, you know, stripes or, or a big Nike logo or anything like that. So you want to avoid all those same thing with jewelry and all that kind of stuff. So again, uh, when they send you the edited photo and stuff, this is, and it's a horizontal, option this is what you would do then basically what you're going to do is you're going to go file save as okay and then just uh down here you can click on desktop you can just type it uh nathan headshot uh and that's basically it and then down here you want to make sure that you click on jpeg okay uh you can also do uh, uh photoshop pdf if you want but uh, jpeg is fine especially for what you're going to be using it for it's not like you're going to be blowing these up for posters or anything like that it, this is literally an 8x10 headshot that you're going to hand in so the high quality is going to be there okay and desktop okay and save uh, make sure that the quality is always always 12 whether you have a slower computer or not always make sure it's 12 so that it doesn't compress it and you don't lose actual focus or, or detail in the photo and then just click on OK. Now, if you go over here, you can actually see it. OK, it's now on the desktop. You can just press space bar and it opens it up. And now, bam, you now have your headshot. OK, now what I'm going to also do here is I'm going to go back to the original file, this Nathan headshot here. OK, this one, which is the normal photo itself. And I'm going to file and save as. OK, and I'm going to go Nathan headshot, no border. OK. And again, I'm going to click on desktop. So that's where it's going to be saving and JPEG and click on save again, high quality. So we want to leave it at 12, click OK. And bam, now you have two images. You have the original one with the border. OK, and then you have the one without the border. Now, this is the one that your guys are going to use for different types of social media. OK. Um, when you post on, on websites like IMDB, which is your online resume, acting resume or anything like that, or Facebook or anything, you don't want to use this one. Okay. You don't want to use the one with the name. This, uh, this one is basically for auditions and auditions only. Um, whether you're submitting online for auditions or, um, the, the hard copies that you print off that you're going to bring into auditions, this is the copy you would use for that. This 
uh, version of your headshot is going to be used for social media, okay? When you post this kind of stuff, it just, you know, you're posting your headshot and it's just kind of weird to do. People know your name and stuff and it's just not really the thing you would do. You want it to look high quality. You are your brand. Make sure things look good and proper and uh, post it to the proper places. So that, uh, in a nutshell, is the uh, horizontal version of headshots, okay? So now we're going to move on to the vertical headshots. Now, these are the industry standard that a lot of people use, okay? Um, so, in, in it, but it, the editing is a little bit different. It's similar, but different uh, layout. So, what we're going to do is we're going to open up the vertical headshot, and I'm going to use my gorgeous wife Danny okay and what I'm going to do is same thing as last time I'm just going to basically drag this onto Photoshop okay now you can actually see that this is again a great headshot uh, it looks good everything's edited and stuff this is usually what the photographers should be doing now if your headshot photographers don't include editing don't go to them Okay, a lot of them charge a lot of money as is, okay? So you should always be getting your headshots edited uh, before you get them. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, photographers should actually be doing this for you as well and formatting them uh, in the industry standard uh, format of 8x10 is what I'm showing you right now. But a lot of them just send you the photos and then it's up to you on how you want to do it. So now, as I mentioned before, um, the dimensions need to be 8x10, but this photo is not 8x10, okay? So you're going to need to do some sort of cropping, okay? But now, as I mentioned before, this is why I recommend for females that a vertical headshot is better because it does show a little bit of the body so that the casting directors and stuff can actually get an idea of... Uh, what they're dealing with, who they're dealing with, uh, what you look like. Um, you might have a really skinny face, yet uh, a wider body, okay? And if you don't show that, then when you walk into the casting room, uh, they might be a little surprised and it might not go well in your favor. So you want to show in your headshot who you are. And so for females, I don't recommend horizontal because it doesn't allow you to show much of your body at all, whereas vertical does. So what we're going to do... Uh, we can uh, keep the same layout here, okay? But I'm just going to delete this so that we can... Uh, um, I'm going to delete Nathan's um, files here just so we can start from scratch so you know where, where we're at. So uh, we dragged the photo, uh, the vertical photo, into Photoshop. Now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go File, New. And again, this is the same thing, guys, okay? And normally it's 8 by 10 okay? But again, you want to do double so that the quality is higher. But it still stays at that 8x10 format, so you're going to go 16 by 20 click Create. Bam, we got now the industry standard format. We're going to go back up here to this tab, okay, with the normal photo. We're going to click on the Move tool, okay, and we're just going to drag it over onto this photo. Bam, now you can see that this is obviously clearly a really large high-res photo, okay. So again, what we're going to do is we're going to press Command-T, so that it outlines the photo so we can resize it and you're just going to drag it down and scale it so that it fits this format uh, sizing that we have okay that's uh, roughly the same okay now you're going to see okay that it obviously clearly doesn't fit um, and it's cropping a lot so what we're going to do is we're going to press command T again and we're going to shrink it down just a little bit more okay um, basically probably to about that okay because what we're going to do on this headshot and i'll show you in a little bit here is we're going to have black borders on the sides as well so this allows you to scale it down a little bit more um, so that you allow for that and it allows you to be able to have more of the photo in the image without cropping it okay now we're probably going to go to about there Okay, press the move tool okay now the same thing okay is now this is a different layer okay above the layer we can just turn this layer off for a second so that we can just see the background now we're going to select the background layer and again just like before we're going to click this paint bucket tool we're going to select the color down here we're going to go to the bottom right click black click okay and we're going to paint this black okay so now the background is black now we're going to go and select the photo layer okay above turn it on Okay, and now you can see that there's a black background behind it. 
Okay, and what we're going to do, um, because we want to we want to make sure that the best portion of this photo is shown, and we're cutting off a lot of her body, so, and we don't really need the top of the hair. We get it, okay? She's not bald, okay? So we can we can crop a little bit of that off. So what I'm going to do is select this layer down here, and see where it says opacity 100. Okay, what we can do is we can just actually click on the word opacity, and just drag it left, okay? Now this is going to make the photo a little bit see-through, Okay. And we'll just go like that. That's fine. And what we're going to do is click the Move tool. And we're going to select it up. Okay, so that that's good because what happens is we're going to have this border here. Okay, and we're going to have a border down here for the name. But we want to make sure that we see enough of her hair and stuff that we're not cutting off too much. And we see a little bit of her body as well. Okay, so we'll do that. That's roughly okay. Okay. And then we could turn this opacity up to 100 again. Again, click on opacity, just drag it to the right. So that's probably the industry side. The reason I turn the opacity is so that you can see the borders and stuff. Uh, you don't have to do that if you're not. It's, it's, it's up to you. What we're going to do now is we're going to select this uh, rectangle tool here. Okay, and make sure that the layer with your photo is selected. And basically, you're just going to make a rectangle of the roughly the same size as the side uh, borders are so um, and we're just going to highlight it like this and then click it and what it's going to do is it's going to crop that photo and if you click, click the move tool you'll be able to see that I apologize guys I have uh, if, if you have that purple line I apologize I have uh, an outline here on the stroke so you can just click this make sure that black is selected uh, you always want to make sure that if you click on stroke that the first one is selected because that'll be the same color as the fill Okay, so that when you do a black fill, the stroke, which is the outline of it, is going to be black as well. Okay, and then click OK. And now, sorry, I apologize. But again, you want this top border to be the same size as this side border. So again, let's just do a rectangle that's roughly the same size. Click on that. Sorry messing up here guys sorry about that okay so make sure you're on the photo tool let's do this again now click the rectangle tool make sure the photo or the fill and the stroke are black now let's do the border bam okay so that's going to create another border here okay which is basically that top rectangle that you made so you can adjust these later so if you turn it off you see what it shows the photo if it turns it on and because it's this layer is above this layer okay the photo is just going to be behind so if i were to select this for example and i want to move it i can still move it but that border is going to be there so that you can you know uh, play around with what portion of the photo you want uh, to stay on the actual headshot and now we're going to do the exact same for the bottom, okay? So again, we're going to select this photo, uh, the photo layer. Click on the rectangle tool. Okay, now this bottom layer is where your name is going to go, okay? So we need this to be at least, uh, you know, uh, three times as much as the top layer, okay? Because you need room for the actual name itself, okay? So let's just uh, highlight the rectangle area, bam. And uh, as you can see, it's a little bit bigger. Now, this is probably the industry standard type of things that you guys are used to seeing when it comes to headshots, okay? Um, and this is the format. So again, now what we're going to do is we're going to create a new layer uh, down here with a little plus symbol, okay? And we're going to move it to the very top because you want it to be above all these borders. And what we're going to do is click on the font. Uh, this is where we're going to put the name in and then click on the color, white, okay? down here we're going to, to come down now again it's already selected on trajan pro which is awesome so i'm going to just type in her name we're going to move it over here okay now it's vertical we're probably going to make it a little bit bigger so again click on the tool highlight this make it a little bit bigger here uh 60 is probably too big so we'll probably go with like 54 okay that's good enough Again, you guys don't want a huge name down here, okay? You don't want anything on your headshot being distracting from the actual headshot itself. And then you just basically move it so that the the end of this name is going to line up with the border. And again, same thing as last time. We're going to select this tool, uh, the, the font tool. And again, every letter except for the actual main letter, we're going to make just slightly smaller so that it looks good. So this is 54. We'll just make them 50 again. Same thing here. I'm gonna make it 50. And that. Make 
50 okay and bam it just looks better again move it so it lines up with that and that is the name and how it should look this is an industry standard headshot um, for the vertical layout okay uh, now if once you're done this and you don't like the crop of your photo then just then come down here select the photo layer okay make sure your move um, tool is selected and you can just move it um, to see where you actually like the photo. Um, again, it's okay if you crop off the top of the head on these vertical headshots, as long as you show some of the hair um, that we know that you're not bald or anything like that, okay? Um, and this still kind of shows a little bit of the, uh, of the body. Now, if it's not showing enough, again, you can make it smaller. And it's, it's up to you if you guys want to do this or not. But press Command to the T, resize it. And make it even a little bit smaller. Move it so that it's in the middle. And you guys see this, this pink line that shows up here so that you know it's in the center. And you can just move it over a little bit and then up. And because it's a little smaller, it's going to show a little bit more of the body now. The borders on the side are going to be a little bit bigger. Okay, you can just leave this top one because you don't want that to cut it off too much. But it at least allows you to show a little bit more of the photo on there without the borders getting, uh, you know, carried away. Don't go really too much more than, than these size borders for that because, again, you want your headshot showing you. You don't want just a bunch of black border on the vertical ones. The horizontal is a little bit different because it's, you know, a different format and layout. But uh, this is basically what you want. So, again, this is the industry standard. And again, if you do do that, again, make sure that you move that name so that it lines up with that, uh, that corner and that side uh, uh, frame there. So, let's go File, Save As. Let's go Danny Headshot, Desktop. Switch this to JPEG save again quality is going to be 12 okay sometimes it's like it just automatically goes to industry standard so you're just going to want to make sure that you drag that so that it's always 12 click ok and then over here it's saved so now on the desktop you can click on this space bar bam there is your edited headshot okay and again now we're going to do the exact same thing up here we're going to come to the original photo folder of it okay and uh we're going to go file save as Danny headshot no border. We're gonna save it to the desktop. JPEG save high quality again. And now over here we have the photo that is without the border and without the name. And again, this is this this is the photo that you're gonna use for social media, your IMDb profile, all those kind of things. And I'll make another video here, guys, soon about IMDb and how to update your resume and your profile and all that kind of stuff. And and all the good things that come with IMDb. Um, that as well is something that you're definitely going to need to invest in and pay for. Um, so I'll put links in the description um, and uh, show you exactly how to do that in future videos here. So we can actually close Photoshop now. Okay, so let's just quick uh, uh, quit. We already saved this. We don't need to save it. Okay, now all of our headshots are, are here on the... Uh, desktop. So again, if we just double click Nathan's headshot. Okay. So again, let me just resize this bad boy. Okay. So again, you have his two uh, photos. You have the headshot that he's going to use for auditions. And then you have the headshot that he's going to use for uh, social media. Okay. Let's close those. And same thing with Danny. We have the two headshots. Okay. We have the headshot that you're going to use for auditions. That This is where you're going to send it off to the printers and all that kind of stuff. I'll put a link. Uh, there's a company called Rocket Repro um, in Vancouver that prints amazing uh, industry standard headshots uh, with really good uh, you know, paper that it prints on. And uh, I'll put some links into uh, some other companies that do it as well down in L.A. Um, that I've used in the past. Um, I don't recommend you guys getting your photos and that printed at like things like Walmart or, 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 you know, Costco or anything like that, because it does on the back of your headshot, uh, watermark your photos. So it'll have a Walmart printed all over the back of your headshot. And again, take your career professionally. Okay. Um, when you hand in your headshot to a casting director, a lot of times they'll look on the back of your headshot, you know, just to see if there's anything else there. And you don't want them reading Walmart or Costco. It's just kind of an unprofessional thing. So you want industry standard printers that understand the 
entertainment industry and what you need. So again, this is the headshot you would take into auditions. This is the one you would use for social media. So we can actually close those and bam, that is it, guys, okay? Again, just keep in mind that headshots are so important. You cannot submit headshots that are not professional, not in today's age, okay? It's too easy to make things look good nowadays that you should never have to uh, you know, just get a friend to take your headshots, okay? You need to invest in your career, and headshots is a massive, massive one. So this is how to edit them. These are the different styles of, of industry standard headshots, okay? Do not print your headshot wide. Um, like, you always want the paper vertical, and if it's a vertical photo, do it like how I showed you, okay? Because that's the industry standard, and that's just what's high quality, one thing you guys definitely don't want, and I'll show you quickly, and I've seen it a lot in the past. I'm just going to open Photoshop again just to show a quick example of what not to do with a headshot. I'm going to take a, a Nathan's photo here, okay, and uh, the original one, and I'm going to drag it into Photoshop. Now, what a lot of people do is they use this as the headshot. And I've seen actual talent agencies do this too. And it's it's not good. Don't do it. It doesn't look good. Um, just don't do this. And what they'll do is they'll click the font tool here. And they'll type his name literally on the photo itself. Okay. They'll, this, is, this is literally what they will send out. This does not look professional. This is not an industry standard headshot. Do not do this ever. Okay, it takes away from the photo when your name when your name is right over top of the photo. It, it's just it's not industry standard, guys. Take yourself seriously. Okay, take yourself professionally. And if you're not going to, then why should casting uh, take you seriously either? This is not good. I have seen this countless times in the audition room when an actor comes in and does this because they don't know how to edit properly or the photographer doesn't know how to edit properly or they just get uh, some Joe Schmo friend of theirs to just do this quickly. Oh, hey man, I just need a photo uh, with, with a name on it and this is what they do. This is not good. This doesn't look good. Don't do this, okay? So again... This is a no-no. This is what you want if it's a vertical or sorry, a horizontal photo, okay? No, yes, no, yes. You need these borders. You want it to stand out. You don't want that name of the photo, okay? And same thing with the uh, vertical photos, okay? You want that name down here. You don't want it on top of the photo. It doesn't look good. It's not what you should be doing, so don't do it, all right? Okay, guys, well, that's basically it in a nutshell. I hope that this helps you guys out. And if it does, please click that subscribe button and that notification bell, okay? Because this is going to just allow me to continue to make these videos for you guys. And I really do hope they help you out. Um, please use all these videos to your advantage, okay? I have been acting for over 20 plus years, okay? And I have uh, made a lot of mistakes in the past, but I've also corrected them and the success of my career has shown that, okay? I have been working for 20 plus years and I want you guys to have the same type of career or if not even better. So use these things. I'm trying to help you guys out, okay? I'm not teaching you anything that's out of left field already or anything like that. These are industry standard uh, lessons that I'm teaching you guys. So please spread the word. Use them in your own career. Go find success, and hopefully, I'll be ended up, uh, or I'll end up uh, seeing you on set with me very soon. Okay. Again, thank you again for tuning in, guys. I hope this helps. Go kick some ass, get some awesome professional headshots, and start kicking some ass in your career. Boy, I say kicking ass a lot. Anyway, cheers. Thank you.